Okay, let's go ahead and find the perimeter of this figure. That is the topic for this particular video. And uh, hopefully you know what the perimeter is. If you do not, you should stick around uh, for a couple minutes as this is an extremely important basic math concept that everyone should know, but probably most out there understand or have heard at least of what the perimeter is. I'll tell you uh, in a moment what the perimeter is, but I wanna give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. And just in case you have a difficult time seeing uh, the numbers here, we are working in millimeters. That's the unit of measure. Uh, so these are all millimeters. But let me go ahead and tell you the um, exact uh, measurements here. So we have three and one half, six and one fourth. Here is two. This is seven and one third. This is three and one half. And here is 14 and one fourth. Again, this is all millimeters. So I'm gonna encourage you to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. So put your calculators away. And if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one moment. And then of course, we're gonna walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can uh, learn mathematics. And I want to tell you right now, all of you can be great in math. But uh, what you need, and by the way, I'm sp uh, especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math, okay? So, you know, those of you that are already great at math already know that you're awesome in math, and that's excellent as well. But there's a lot of people, math is like that one subject that so many people have a tough time with. Please do not give up. What you need to be successful in math is great math instruction. So whoever you're learning math from or whatever you're learning math from, it's important that you understand what's going on because nothing's more frustrating than sitting in the classroom and being totally lost on the instruction coming your way. See, math is a technical subject. And unfortunately, it can be taught in sometimes, I think, an overly technical manner. The way I like to uh, teach math is to explain things in really easy to understand language so everybody gets what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, anything with a uh, math section on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes, but if you truly wanna be excellent in math, you have to be an excellent note taker. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the perimeter of this figure. So what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is essentially just the sum total around whatever object or figure you are looking at. In other words, we're gonna add up the distance or the length around the figure. So in this particular uh, figure, we have to add up this length, this length, this length, this length, this length, and this length. We just add all these numbers up and that is the perimeter. So if that's what you thought it was, oh, well, that's excellent. And hopefully, uh, again, you were able to add up all these. This is basically one big fraction problem. Now, uh, if you didn't, you know, if you couldn't do this, which is basic arithmetic and you had to use your calculator, at least you did the problem. Okay, so that's excellent. But let's see if you got the right answer. And the perimeter of this particular figure is 36 and 56 millimeters. If you did get a decimal equivalent, that's fine. But I tell you what, if you did this without a calculator, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate with your friends and families that you can do uh, perimeter problems that involve fractions. Good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem. So again, effectively, this is um, basically one big fraction problem. Now here, I kind of just uh, got rid of the millimeters as a unit of measure, but the perimeter is a, uh, we have to have that unit of measure millimeters in, okay, in our final answer. So because we, it is effectively a length, all right, we're talking about distance here, but when we're looking at the actual object or the actual figure, we'll just uh, do away with those millimeters for a second and we'll just work on adding up all these fractions. Now, when we add up these fractions, let's be smart about it, okay? Because here you can see we have 
a one half, three and one half. We have some mixed numbers. This is six and one fourth. So what we want to do is like look for nice pairs of number or opportunities to add this up easily. So here, this three and one half, it would be really nice to kind of add up this three and one half with this three and one half because we're dealing with one halves. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to use grouping symbols. So three and one half, and three and one half, that's a nice pair to add up. So here we have six and one fourth and 14 and one fourth. So because we have one fourth here, so let's go ahead and group those together. So that'd be six and one fourth plus 14 and one fourth. You see, this is gonna be a lot easier to do it this way than say, okay, three and one half plus six and one fourth. You know, you don't have to add up uh, these particular numbers in any one way. As long as you get the sum total, that's what counts, okay? So you wanna you know, think about opportunities to make your life easier. Remember, you always wanna work as easy as possible uh, when you are doing mathematics. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and add these two numbers up because we're dealing with one-fourths. And then we are left with our two and uh, seven one-third. So we'll have this as our last remaining group. Now, if you didn't do it this way, that's perfectly fine. Uh, again, you know, you should look at this and be like, oh, okay, you know, you would have saved time or this would have made your life easier. If you got the right answer, you know, then obviously that's the most important thing. But when you are adding up, uh, you know, mathemat in mathematics, when you're adding a large sum of numbers, you always want to look for nice, easy ways, kind of group things together and always use parentheses to form these groups. But let's go ahead and get going now. So we have three, uh, three and one half plus three and one half. Of course, that's 3.5 plus 3.5. Hopefully you can see that's easily, that is seven. All right, so three and one half plus three and one half is seven. Uh, by the way, too, if you're struggling a bit with fractions right now, if you're like, ah, you know, I need to kind of do a fraction review, let me give you some quick uh, recommendations on uh, two of my math courses that I think you would uh, might be interested in. One is my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini uh, course, three chapters, goes through basic mathematics, fractions, place values, decimals, uh, percent, all that good stuff. So if you're kind of getting back into math or you need a basic math review, check out that course. Um, just go to my website and under the middle and high school math section, you'll see that. Also, pre-algebra would be a nice fit because I do have a full chapter on fractions there. So if you're not really understand what I'm doing in terms of the fractions, then, you know, check that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the rest of this problem. So six and one fourth plus 14 and one fourth. We can kind of break up these mixed numbers. Six and one fourth is the same thing as six plus one fourth, okay? So this mixed number fraction, you know, effectively, it means the same thing as six plus one fourth. Same thing here, 14 and one fourth is the same thing as 14 plus one fourth. So uh, again, we're dealing with addition. These are all positive numbers. So I can just go ahead and uh, put my integer values, my six and 14 together, these nice whole numbers, and then I'll add up the one fourth and one fourth like this. Now I'm not gonna do this right now, I'm just kind of organizing this problem so we can kind of take the next step in an easier manner, okay? All right, let's do, go ahead and take a look at this uh, two plus seven and one third. Again, seven and one third is the same thing as seven plus one third, so we'll write it this way, two plus seven and one third. Now some of you, uh, you know, could see, oh, I don't have to do this. I just kind of know this already in advance. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure you're showing your work some, you know, uh, steps. Uh, you know, some of you are going to be more detailed. Others, you're going to not show every single step. But I'm going to encourage you to always err on showing more steps rather than less steps and always be double checking your work. Now, when I do my videos here, I like to, you know, go nice and slow and not assume that, you know, whoever's listening to this, you know, uh, you know, remembers how to do this, right? That's why, you know, in my particular videos, if you've been following me on YouTube for a while, first of all, thank you very much. If you're new to my YouTube channel, when I do a math prom, I go nice and slow, okay? The whole objective is to explain every single aspect of the problem, and I don't assume that anyone out there just, you know, oh, yeah, they should know this. Listen, some people don't need to know this, and so I like to, that's why I like to explain things super thoroughly. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So... Uh, of course, we have our seven. We can't forget that. So six plus 14 is what? That's 20. And then one fourth plus one fourth. We can add these fractions, same denominator. So this is going to be one plus one or two fourths. So one fourth plus one fourth is what? Two fourths or one half. But I'm just going to write it first as two fourths here so you can just see what's going on. Remember, you can add fractions when the denominators are the same. We just simply add the numerator. And then here, 
I have 2 plus 7 plus 1 third, so that 2 plus 7 would be 7, uh, excuse me, that would be 9 plus 1 third. Okay, so we're just whittling through this problem one little step at a time. So now I have 7 plus 20 plus 2 fourths plus 9 plus 1 third. And at this time, we could effectively drop these brackets if we like. Let's go ahead and actually drop them. So, uh, so 7 plus 20 plus 2 fourths plus uh, 9 plus 1 third. So let's go ahead and add all these whole numbers up, 7, 20, and 9. That gives us 36. And now we can go ahead and deal with these last remaining fractions. 2 fourths is same as the frac is, is uh, uh, the same as a fraction one half. Anytime you can reduce a fraction, immediately reduce it, simplify it. So I just kind of waited to this uh, moment in time to do that. So two fourths is the same thing as one half, and then we have our one third. So now we just have to figure out what this is: thirty-six plus one half plus one third. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so 36 plus 1 half plus 1 third. An easy way to add fractions is to use this bow tie method. If you're not familiar with it, you've got to understand this method. It's one of the best methods uh, when dealing with fractions. But basically, you should get the uh, 5, 6. Okay, 1 half plus 1 third is 5, 6. If you just um, rewrote this using the same, uh, the lowest common denominator, 6, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you got 5, 6. But anyways, back to this method. So the bow tie method is... You can add fractions by taking this number and multiplying it across. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, you follow the specific pat uh, pattern. That's our numerator, and then our denominator is going to be 2 times 3 is 6. That's just a nice shortcut way. Uh, 3 plus 2 is, of course, 5, so this is going to be 5 over 6. And we are uh, basically done, because here I have this fraction. I can't reduce it, and I have 36, so 36 plus 5, 6 is the same as this mixed number fraction, 36 and 5, 6. And remember, we are dealing with perimeters, so we got to add in that unit of measure, which is millimeters. Okay, so that is it. Now, if you used a calculator, that's fine. But if you use the calculator because you were, you know, fearful, or if you were just looking at these fractions and you were just like, I can, you know, I don't want to do those fractions, you know, give me a problem with the nice little numbers, you know, like, hey, just take out the fractions and I'll just deal with these nice, lovely little numbers. Well, you know, some problems are like that, but you got to make friends with fractions. Remember, fractions are your friends. And when you, um, you know, deal with fractions, you really need to, you know, uh, basically learn as much as you possibly can about fractions. So if you're kind of like, yeah, I think I know somewhat about fractions, the more you know, the better off you're going to be because fractions are everywhere, not only in arithmetic and geometry and algebra, you got to be great at fractions. Okay, so if this little video was helpful in some small, tiny way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.